What's going on, Sky Squad? We are back in the building. How y'all doing on this good hump day? All right. Um, we got some things to talk about, so we're gonna go ahead and dive into it. But first, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Hit that notification bell button, join the texting community, hit that like button, and also pre-order my new book, The Wickedest Wives, book two, A Vicious Reality, now on Amazon. If you haven't caught up on book one, definitely pick that up while you're at it as well. The book will be out in May. It's good. All right, so with that out of the way, housekeeping done, I wanted to talk to you guys first about the Anne Marie interview, Anna Marie interview that she did with Carlos King on Carlos King's podcast, Reality with the King. Now, one of the biggest headlines to come out of that was that Anna Marie claimed, according to our friends at the Jasmine brand, thank you guys so much for the visual, um, claims Garcelle Beauvais wanted to be the only black woman on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Now, she also made quite a few other claims about Garcelle and especially about Crystal. But, you know, I want to talk to you guys about my general sense about the interview itself before I dive into the actual claims that she makes in the interview. Um, overall, I felt like Carlos was able to do what the network didn't, and that was to humanize Anna Marie in a way that I do feel like she deserved to be humanized, right? If you watch the show, what you will have seen was Anna Marie entered, and I did not recap this show mostly because I also need some shows that I just watch for the pure enjoyment of it because sometimes having to work through a show and take notes, um, it, it, it's, you know, it's work. Right. So I need some things that are just kind of fun for me. And, you know, in, in, in truth, I could have still recapped it from just the viewing perspective. But I oftentimes like to give you guys a bit more detail and my thoughts on specific aspects. But that's neither here nor there. Um, right now, what I do want to say is that there are elements of her story that I found so compelling. Right. Right. You know, the fact that she was adopted, she's Canadian, she is possible, she's on this journey to find out who her Nigerian father is because he may not have even known of her existence. You know, so much about her upbringing that, you know, made her unaware of certain aspects of Black culture. But still being in a family filled with love, even though it was an adopted family. I just found her story to be very compelling. And, you know, she's and also having just lost her mom, apparently during the filming process. And I don't believe that was shown, but spoken about later on, I think at the reunion. It just goes to show that storytelling and the way that the producers lay out a story for a person can definitely go a long way towards how the fans end up feeling about said person because she was basically talking about how you didn't really see her in one-on-one -on -one scenes with people her much of her home life you know with her kids and you know some of the endeavors that she had going on so we were missing a huge element about who she was outside of the conflict that she found herself in with some of the fan favorites, right? So I do agree that that is what happened with Anna Marie on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. It felt like she was benched. But I think there is a reason for that that was not touched on yesterday that we also, I mean, some of it was and some of it wasn't. Um, you know, there were earlier reports when she was named as a new housewife about her husband, who is, you know, uh, an ex, you know, I guess he's an ex, you know, NFL football player, um, 
you know, he has that sort of sports background, right? And I'm pulling out my notes here because there's something I do want to talk about in just one second. Um, definitely, he was an NFL star, Marcellus Wiley. All right. So there were aspects of her um, husband's, you know, social media and, you know, things that he had position his position on, you know, whether or not, you know, trans athletes should be able to compete specifically like in women's sports. And, you know, that really began to take shape as what could potentially be the narrative for her moving into this new season. All right. So that was that was one thing. And they did touch on this in the interview. And she said they actually also touched on it on the show in a filmed conversation in which she felt like the women were badgering her about her her and her husband's stance on the matter. She also indicated that, you know, Garcelle privately agreed with her stance. That was what she alleges. Also, there is the bigger issue that I think that is an undercurrent in the reasoning why Anna Marie's story was relegated mostly to her interactions with the women and less about her home life and her husband. And that is because, as you guys may recall, The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills began airing right at the end of October, okay? Anna Marie wasn't slated to even appear until a few episodes in, right? So within those few weeks, all right, and then up into her appearance, People Magazine released an article wherein it is stated that the former NFL star Marcellus Wiley, her husband, was accused of S-E-X-U-A-L assault while attending Columbia University. Now, this, these allegations were out in 1994, okay? Um... And apparently, in this lawsuit filed in New York State Supreme Court on Tuesday, November 22nd, or at least the article was published on November 22nd, the victim states that this happened in 1994, okay? She is suing the university. She is suing its trustees, okay? And she accused the administrators of the school for displaying a fondness towards Wiley, which she believed led to the dismissal of her accusations at the time. So let's put this in perspective. The Royal Housewives of Beverly Hills is a show based on entertainment. And we're talking about now it may veer into the scandalous at times, right? And we can talk about, you know, the different types of scandals on different types of, you know, shows. But because of the nature of this particular type of allegation, which, again, this 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 all has to play out or maybe it has played out. I really don't know. But what I'm telling you about is what happened at the time. Right. The timeline and why she may have found herself on the receiving end of so many cuts in terms of her edit was, I think, it is reasonable to possibly assume that the network may have wanted to distance themselves from her and her husband, specifically her husband and these allegations because of things that the network has had to deal with in the past, right? Does it become more trouble than it's worth? Honestly, it would not surprise me if at that moment, they had made that decision. Once this came out, the decision was made that she would be dramatically reduced and not be asked back. That is, to me, what could have been the reason why we saw much less of her and why, as she states, some of the women, particularly Garcelle, 
took one stance with her during filming and then another stance with her post filming. OK, she does talk about her and Garcelle having, you know, a moment where they did, you know, I guess maybe film together and talk and bonded over their commonalities. But how when the show began airing and Marie began Anna Marie began to see a different side of her. Right. So that's what I think we cannot overlook in this discussion. And personally, as an interviewer, I would have asked her also in the beginning, are there things that you don't want me to talk to, to ask you about? I give my interviewers that courtesy personally. So I can see that happening. Also, it was an indication to me that if even if she was asked, she probably would have declined to speak about it because it's a legal matter. So I think that's why you didn't get a discussion about it in the interview. You know, I just don't I just see. Personally. Just kind of knowing Carlos, I know that that's not a direction he's going to go with a guest. Um, especially because it is a legal matter. They may have already discussed it. It could have been discussed and cut out. Um, but I just think it's a respect thing, right? Um, and the reason why I wouldn't ask also, too, is a respect thing because it is a legal matter. But they did, even when he did ask her, yo, your husband just made some statements about Garcelle and Crystal online what are you I mean you know what's what's up with that right because why is this man coming after these women and she was like well you know it's just his his defense of me you know he's just being a defensive husband she's he's just being a defensive husband that's it you know he's, that that's all it is um and it's kind of like well okay because there was an article that had come out about Crystal and Garcelle taking a specific stance against certain aspects or accusations or allegations about Anna Marie, specifically one in which she was allegedly saying she was best friends with Candace Owens. And she revealed that she was following Candace Owens because Candace Owens took a stand against a specific fashion house and a campaign that came out featuring kids being depicted in scenarios that were inappropriate. And she felt like Candace Owens was the only person at that time taking an active stance on it. And so she followed her on social media, but she claims she does not know Candace Owens. All right. The other statement was alleged that by, I'm assuming by Crystal and Garcelle, according to Anna Marie, was that there was this thing, I don't know if they said it specifically or it was listed in the article, but that she was basically let go because of her right wing stance and being a Trump supporter, which I don't believe to be true, to be honest with you, because I just think that um, there are plenty of housewives who are who vote conservatively. Let me just say that. I think that some of your favorite wealthy housewives vote conservative. Now, let's break down what that means, okay? If you are voting conservative and you have, are sticking with the Republican Party, then by de fact, by de facto, that could be using the term incorrectly because I'm literally just waking up, um, but I did have an espresso. Anyway, you would likely end up voting for Trump because th that could very that is looking like what the outcome of the Republican situation is going to be. So is she a MAGA supporter? Is she a Trump supporter? She says she's not, but she does not go into whether or not she is a Republican or a Democrat, which is her choice. I tell you guys all the time, 
my job as it relates to what I do here is not to police in politics. My job is not to be the accountability police. I'm simply here to tell y'all what I see, what I like, and what I don't like, okay? I'm not the moral police, but if I don't, if I say, if I feel like it's wrong, I'm going to say it's wrong, and that's that. There's no consequence to what I'm saying, right? I'm not a judge or a jury to put anybody into a heaven or an H-E double hockey sticks or a jail for that matter, okay? These are opinions and commentary and usually it's supposed to be fun, okay? So those are kind of my stances on Anna Marie's space in the world of reality television and why perhaps she may have been maybe cut down in terms of her um, uh, uh, time on the show. What I will also say is she, when she says that Garcelle wanted to be the only black woman on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, I guess I found that odd because wasn't it Garcelle who advocated for Cherie to be brought onto the show? Um, Cherie was brought on as Garcelle's friend. So I don't know if that actually jives with me. She also goes on to state that Garcelle uses race as a way to sort of intimidate the rest of the women because the rest of the women know that the moment that Garcelle mentions race, then they could potentially be canceled because they don't want to be seen as being racist. Um, here's what I will say about that. And she uses an example that, you know, Garcelle called out Dorit for basically, you know, saying that she attacked her and how it comes across when, you know, uh, a white woman says that to a black woman in an instance where there was no attack, right? In that instance, it was basically Garcelle telling Dorit, hey, that was kind of means that was kind of that wasn't right. I didn't really like that you did that. And no point did Garcelle raise her voice. So it really wasn't an attack, right? Conversely, I guess the same thing happened with Sutton and Anne Marie, where Sutton said that she was attacked and Anna Marie felt like Garcelle didn't stick up for her. But at the end of the day, it was like, girl, did you stick up for did you stick up for Garcelle when it happened to her? You're expecting someone to stick up for you when you have not also done the same. Garcelle is fighting this battle on her own, has been doing so before you got here. And at this point, now that you're here, you're wanting her to advocate for you when you're not also advocating for her. So it's a battle that you also have to fight yourself, which, to be honest, is going to be made harder because we didn't get the full picture of Anna Marie. Now, let me go backwards, okay, to, to kind of really tell you guys what I think should have happened. Regardless of those accusations, I felt like you've already hired her at this point. The least that could be done is to humanize her enough that we show her perhaps with her kids, one-on-ones with, you know, some of the other cast members. We show, we show up the lighter side of her to balance out some of the harshness, okay, that sort of went along with her that didn't really allow her to shine in the best light. She does admit to making some mistakes, specifically the esophagus gate of it all, and she really attributes that to Kyle being the first one to bring it up. While I agree with her that Kyle definitely does a lot of things and then does not take ownership of them, the thing that happened with Anna Marie that placed her in that position was that she kept going with it episode after episode after episode. Don't nobody want like what could have been funny in the beginning became something that was annoying by the end. OK. And, you know, she talks about her take her her getting um, the 
response that she got from Dr. Tiffany Moon, Dr. Nicole Martin from um, Dallas and then Miami, respectively. Dr. Moon is from Real Housewives of Dallas. Dr. Nicole is from Real Housewives of uh, Miami, um, as well as I forget the name of the organization. Please correct me in the comments. But it was because of the incessantness with which she continued to bow breed, bow, browbeat this issue over Sutton Small esophagus as a healthcare professional. Yes, you're right. Had it been Kathy Hilton, Kathy Hilton most likely would have laughed about it or made fun of it and moved on. Because Kathy Hilton don't stay on one subject for long. I mean, I just don't think she, I don't think that's just who, I just don't think her mind works that way, okay? And that's no disrespect. And I think she's also right, too, in that the other ladies, had they done it, it would have been received differently because they had been experienced as whole people, which unfortunately for her, she had not. OK. And then it kept going and going and going and going. But she attributes it to it being the color of her skin working in the profession that she works in. Now, <laughs> I. I I would go into my own personal experience viewing that, but I won't do that here. Um, all I can say is this. If that is her experience, I do feel badly for her. And I hate I hate that she has experienced that. And to really think about it, I hate that she has had to experience the amount of vitriol that she has. Because I don't think that we really got to know her all that well. But... I do think that she also didn't do herself many favors either. Okay. She also goes on to really blast Crystal by saying that Crystal, she accuses the ladies of pandering to the audience. Um, and virtue, she uses the term virtue signal quite quite a bit. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. You know, that is really up to the interpretation of y'all, the audience. What do you think? That could be the case. I really don't know. Um, do I think that the woman is, you know, uh, I don't know. I feel like we didn't really get to know her that well. I know her a little bit better, I think, because of this interview. Actually, I felt like I got to know a lot about her. And she does seem like she does seem like a, 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 a very um, I felt like she's a, she's a woman who feel like she, who, who feels like she wants to do good in the world. And I, I can't fault a person for that, right? I love that. And, and that, that's the type of person I love. But she goes on to really lay into Crystal, okay? She basically said that Crystal came after her, okay? And basically off camera told her, girl, it's okay because Lisa Renner used to make up stuff like this all the time. And then at dinner, we'll apologize to each other and then we'll move on. But she says that Crystal did continue to double down on her um, aggressions against her. I don't want to say aggressions because the Lord knows that that word is very triggering for people. Her stance against her. And, you know, and Marie, Anna Marie felt like, no, girl, you've come after my profession. And she alleges that Crystal told her in the airport in Heathrow while they were not filming that, whew, okay. Girl, you just gave me my storyline, which is why she later said, and I just gave you your storyline. You should thank me for making you relevant. Because for Crystal, she says that Crystal felt like, oh, I've got my storyline. So I don't I'm 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 clear to, you know, come back next season because she alleges that Crystal wants to be a housewife really, 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 really bad. And that she also alludes or it kind of insinuates that. There could be some truth to the story about Crystal, you know, not wanting her other 14 girlfriends to be on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills when they were asked. But then she took the job herself. I mean, she there's there's an allusion to that sort of being true because she does know some of those 14 girlfriends. Um, do I think that that's true? I think that there could be some truth to her, to Crystal saying that to her specific what made me think it could be true. Now I like and I like it Crystal. 
when but when she said that Crystal said, oh, Lisa Renner used to do it all the time. Knowing Lisa's antics. And then hearing that Crystal said that, something about that rang true for me. Now, I mean, I, I, I and that's just that's just where I got to leave it. So, what I will say is this: in conclusion, was Anna Marie given a fair shot on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? Um, no, you know, she her complete story was not told. Um. And it's unfortunate because I do think that, you know, when we have the opportunity to see Black wealth and luxury, you know, on a show like Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, I do think that when you make the commitment to tell someone's story um, from a production standpoint, I believe that you stick it through. Um at least to it, it at least to show some different sides to her. But I also firmly believe that there was probably concerns about the narrative surrounding her husband and some of these accusations that the network probably wanted to distance themselves from. I can see that being the case, at least. Do I know it to be true? No, but I could see it being the case. And so that is what I think has happened with Anna Marie Wiley and the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Um, of course, you know, I'm always appreciative of a good interview because I like knowing and I like understanding and hearing you know, the different aspects of people that we did not get to see, unfortunately. And I do think that that's unfortunate for Anna Marie. She also takes a couple of parting shots at Crystal and Garcelle. And one of the things that she says for that she hopes for with Garcelle is that she hopes that she finds a man because she feels like Garcelle has been talking about her ex-husband for the past several years that she's been on the show. So Anna Marie is not without the requisite housewives shade. I guess she just didn't last long enough for us to really see it. Those are my thoughts. Oh my God. Oh my God. Before I do that, before I go, because I spent way a lot of time dissecting Anna Marie, can we get it to Nene and Carlos real quick? Now, Nene and Carlos out here doing car, carpool karaoke, okay? Now, I, this would, Carlos, this might be a show I did for you riding around with Nene Leaks and, 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 and us here. Why are y'all riding around in the first place? Where are y'all going, okay? So they end up in the car talking about respectful cheating. Let's get into it real quick. For cheating, I could deal with that. You can? I might, yeah, because see, look, if I'm here in Georgia and you went to San Francisco for the I'm just saying, I'm saying any city. I'm saying if he went to New York for the weekend. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. What I don't, what you don't know. Won't hurt you. It won't hurt you. However. Okay. I mean, listen, I guess what she's trying to say is, listen, you don't, you never know what people not doing in your presence. Okay. I guess that's basically where this is going, right? If you're going to cheat, you need to do it with respect. Now you yes. do. You do need. I don't like people who are not respectful. So these are the ones that aren't respectful. Yes. They're talking to the side piece and lying to them. First of all, you already lied to whoever this is on the side. So if you're gonna be respectful, you first you tell that person you give me fifty feet on my woman. <laughs> <laughs> Give me 50 feet on my woman. I guess my thing is too, it's like, first of all, like I never understand, like, I guess I always think about like the, the Martell of it all. Like, and I, it, that's an unfair characterization. My, I'm sorry, Martell. I just be, it just is an example because I feel like 
why are you making this person feel comfortable enough? You making this person feel like they in a relationship with you. So are you cheating? Like, are you just, are you just having a wham, bam? Or are you saying, I want you to be my woman on the side? I mean, is you making her a Jolene? Is that what you're doing? Like, I, you, that's what I'm trying to figure out. So I guess that's the difference with what they're talking about. Again, let's continue with this with Carlos and, and, and Nini Kiki and in the car. <laughs> like, don't ever approach me when you see me with my woman. So that's the rule. Game. Number one, you can never approach. I couldn't imagine somebody approaching me. It would just be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? What is I don't know why this conversation is sending me, okay? It is sending me. Who sent you to me? What yes. are you doing right now? Yes. So, yeah, I do agree that there have to be respectful cheating. Is that what you call it? It's called respectful cheating. Respectful it's when cheating. your side piece doesn't call my phone saying, put my man on the phone, B. And I'm like, well, dang, girl. Or say, posting say, on say. your social media. Oh God! If have when the person does that, are they are they just trying to be petty? Yeah, or or when the yeah. side piece posts the arm of the man with his yeah. tattoos, so you could see the year he was born and the year of his of his daughter, so that you can identify that yeah, girl, this is my man too. That's disrespectful cheating. That keep is. your keep your side pieces in check. That's now that's true. <clears throat> keep your side piece in check. Yeah. Well, if you thought if you if your man had a side piece, I mean, has he ever had a side piece? My man? Yeah. Although he's that, African, okay. he has never had a side <laughs> piece. Now respect. Why is this conversation sending me into hysterics right now? Um, Nini and Carlos, I'm gonna need y'all to get in the car a couple more times. Give us some more kiki and commentary because <laughs> I don't know why this conversation is sending me through. Because I'm in mind, I'm like, where are y'all going? <laughs> where y'all headed to? Are y'all headed down to Neiman's? Like, where, where are y'all headed to get something to eat? Why? What are y'all doing together? Do y'all hang out every weekend? Are y'all flying? Y'all headed to the airport? Where are you going? <laughs> anyway, y'all, I just thought we would end it with something fun that I had seen right before I hopped onto this thing. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Remember, everything that we do on this channel is really in fun and for the sake of entertainment. Have a good time with it. I try not to go too really, too really, really, really deep or too really, really, really serious. Um, but it's it's really meant for this to be a break in your day and for you to have a good old kiki at the end of the day and just some thought provoking conversation. Now, if you like this content, make sure you guys hit that like button as well, because it does help the engagement. Please use the QR code at the corner at the top of this video because you can actually go straight to Amazon to pre-order the book, Wickedest, The Wickedest Wives, book two, A Vicious Reality. It will be out May 14th, unless something changes. We're working on the audio for uh, right now for the Audible. That should be hopefully available around the same time, if not a week or two later. So... For those of you guys who like to listen, you guys will be able to do that as well. I have found a narrator who is, I think, perfect for this role. With that being said, I will catch you all in the next video.